Hi everyone, this is Mr. Richmond, and for this video I'm going to walk through how to make an appropriate data table using Google Docs. So the first thing that I want to ask myself when I'm going to create my data table is how many rows and how many columns do I need? So for this hypothetical set of data, I'm going to be inputting 12 months of the year in the average temperature of, let's say, Connecticut. So this data is not accurate. I'm just making the video to show you how to make a data table. I did not research this data, so please don't use it for any real information. So if I click on the Insert tab at the top of my Google Doc, I'm going to go to Table. I do want 12 rows for the 12 months. However, I'm going to add an additional row so I can label each of my columns. So I'm going to go to 13. So if you need 10 rows, I would suggest adding an additional row so you can have some space to label your columns. So I'm going to make two columns, one being the month of the year, the other being the average temperature of that month. So two columns and 13 rows should work nicely. I'm going to click my cursor up at the top here. I'm going to center where I want my title because an appropriate data table should have a nice title. That includes both the independent and dependent variables. So an effective title for this, if I make it bold, maybe underline. I wouldn't require my students to do this, but I think it looks a little bit nicer and, and more formal. I might say the average monthly temperatures in Connecticut. As we discussed in class, the independent variable always goes in the left or the first column with the dependent variables going in the remaining columns. There could be some situations where you need more than two columns and you might be measuring multiple variables. So the dependent variable would be in those remaining columns as well. For this example, however, we only have the independent variable in the first column. Again, I just like to center my labels, make them stand out a little bit using bold. So my month is my independent variable, my dependent variable, what I'm measuring is gonna go in the second column and that's gonna be the average temperature. And this would be a good opportunity for me to mention that you need to include units of measurement. We're going to just use Fahrenheit because we're more comfortable with that, even though we typically use Celsius and Kelvin in the science classroom. But for the sake of this video, I'm just going to include units of measurement being Fahrenheit. You can go ahead and mess around and try to find the insert symbol. Uh, but for the sake of time, I'm not going to insert my degree symbol for Fahrenheit. You're welcome to find that if you would like to. So I'm going to go ahead and hit January, February. You get the idea. March. I'm not going to input all my data. And then the average temperature, let's say, is 34 degrees for January. Again, this is not accurate data. I did not research this. 37 for February, 45 for March. And I would do that for my remaining sets of data for the remaining months. And I hope this video helped you. And good luck with your construction of your data table.